what is going on everyone and welcome to a special video that i wanted to talk about so this has been on my mind a lot because i often tell new players who are getting into life skilling what to do and so what i wanted to talk about today was how profitable is gathering and which tool i guess is like the easiest and the one you could use for for both beginners and end game players, which ones make the most money, which type of gathering, basically. So to give you an idea, I am Guru19 gathering. I've been doing it for a while. I'm generally in the top five on most channels. Not that that means anything to me, but it just gives you an idea of how long I've been doing it. And so what I wanted to talk about was profits from just selling the raw materials to the market versus profits from taking those materials and then turning it into another product and then selling it to the market. So whether that's cooking, alchemy, and uh, processing and whatnot, what I think is good for both beginners all the way to the uh, intermediate and to the high profit end game stuff. So it's no secret that like cooking is very profitable, like more profitable than grinding in my opinion, but that's at the very high end. Uh, let's say you had like almost perfect year, but that's beside the point. What we're going to be talking about is like the basics of all the tools and what I think is good for number one, selling materials directly to the market off of like tier one material. So let's uh, break this down and then I'll call these things like tier one, tier two and tier three materials just to make it easier. So for example, you have the raw timbers for example right we'll call these tier ones because these are what you get when you chop a tree sometimes you'll get like a tier two which is what you do when you process those timbers and then uh, you turn it into planks and then tier threes would be turning those planks into plywood so it's like tier one two three a step up and each one costs more so for beginners i like to tell you that gathering is very like easy beginner friendly and ultimately it comes down to mastery but what are the things that I think are good for, you know, whether you're a beginner one, what should you do? So in my opinion, both butchering and fluid collecting are probably the most profitable in terms of I got these materials. I just grinded or like gathered in a circle and I want to sell these materials just straight up to the market. Now, I think butcher knife or gathering meats is probably more profitable um just directly selling those meats to the market and it's faster so what we're going to be factoring in is time um obviously energy is different for everyone else so it's like how much you make depends on how much energy you get and did you use agris and all that stuff but starting at beginner one let's say you have minimal gear or no gear I think I would start with a butcher knife of some sort. Over time, I've gotten a lot of these. You can get a lot of magic tools. It starts from skilled five, but if you're a beginner, then uh, they're just like beginner tools that you can get. And um, I don't actually remember. Let me go look this up real quick. Logia. Uh, does this have an entry level requirement? I don't think so. So yeah, you can get Logia very cheaply these days and you can just buy from the vendor so if you're beginner one you can start there but i think there is some sort of calculation that like at a certain point magic tools are more profitable than logia i would say gathering meat is probably the easiest one because there's a higher density of you know like wolves or sheep or whatever you're doing and then it's easier to get like tens of thousands of the meat and then just sell it on the market whereas fluid collectors like the trees are more spread out, but then they give you like different kinds of materials. And so technically now we're talking about profits. So we'll go into butcher knife because that gives you a majority of meats. And then it gives you those black gem fragments, basically the things to upgrade like Logia, the mono stuff and tools. And then fluid collector is like saps and bloods, which is more for alchemy, whereas butcher knife is for cooking. Um, the lumbering axe is chopping trees and making like materials for, let's say you're trying to do sailing and, uh, you want to make, I don't know, a boat. You need a lot of wood. 
kind of thing. Pickaxe is a lot of raw materials for, I guess, a lot of things. They all kind of connect to each other in terms of life skills anyway. So, like, if you want to make cooking tools or alchemy tools, you need to gather the rough stone and then you make those. And then once you have the cooking or alchemy tools, you use the bloods and meats that you get to make those. Uh, tanning knives are for skins and... Um, this is actually one of the things you can do for the infinite potion piece, the infinite mana one down at Navern Step, the one that everyone hates. Yeah, I remember doing that twice. And then the hoe is for gathering herbs and stuff, which I actually haven't been doing a lot, but that is high XP. Like, gathering herbs is high XP, but we'll talk about that in maybe another time. Uh, so profits, number one, butcher knife. I think it's pretty competitive with uh, gathering saps, because right now... Um, doing anything for alchemy related is more for the higher end people. So if you're doing like elixir crafting and let me show you, I made a video of this a while ago and I will say that like 99% of people, you will probably never need to use this ever. So elixirs are for group grinding and grinding those like 1% very high end spots because it's technically better than using a draft. But, um, do I think it's really worth it? Very situationally, and especially if you're doing like high end PvP as well. But ultimately, for your average player, just use like one of these frenzies or like perfumes. You can buy these off the market super easily. It's no big deal. And then you'll be fine for most grind spots. Like 99% of you will probably never have to use elixir rotations in your BDO career. So that's the way it is. And so after that, I used to do. A lot of lumbering as well. That's like a mix of XP plus money. But if you're going for pure profits, selling the materials, um, butcher fluid, good. And then everything else is, I guess, more for XP and stuff you need. So ultimately, it comes down to what do you enjoy doing and what do you need? So ultimately, you would gather because you need it, not because you're mostly gathering for profit. But if you are, um, things I could tell you, if you were trying to expand it, so this is, let's say you gathered like an hour or two and you have a bunch of materials now and you don't know, what should I do to make more profits, right? Like, let's say instead of making that 200 mil, you could sell all your raw materials to the market or you could turn that 200 mil into like 500 mil. That's just a random number, by the way. So what would I do? So as you guys know, and we are calculating time as well, and obviously the amount of resources you gathered. So cooking is actually probably one of the most profitable life skills out there. Um, the market changes very regularly, so it's hard to tell you what to make. And it's there are calculators online where you just put in like what your uh, level is, your mastery, and it tells you like all the things that will help you either level up faster or put in the prices of the items and it'll be like here this one is the most profitable to make at this time so it's very hard to tell people what to make and some of it is actually like low-key on the secret because some people just like making huge profits and so yeah we're just gonna you're gonna have to figure that out yourself but overall things that i think are very like not secretive but things that are very profitable are making different kinds of meals, which is like, um, you use a lot of materials to make the cron meals, right? And then some of these are just kind of, hey, what looks interesting on the market? How much does it cost to make these? And so it's not a secret that you have to look at the formulas and just like calculate the numbers, but I think overall, cooking is definitely the most profitable uh, life skill, followed by... I, I struggle to say alchemy because alchemy is profitable, but it's very slow. So if you're calculating your hourly gains, it, it's not a lot. So another thing I would do that's very low effort and for beginners is processing. So let me show you something, for example. Let's take... I don't know. Let's use this storage, for example. I have like hundreds of thousands of raw timbers and then if I wanted to turn them all into planks and plywood, I could do that. But it's very easy to do, very little effort and decent amount of money. 
So definitely, if you are doing timbers and stuff, that is good money for AFK activities. Uh, alchemy is good, but you have to kind of be more on the like geared side of everything. And then cooking is just generally a beginner friendly one as well. So what else would I do? And I guess before we wrap this up, I want to talk about how you should go about gearing up in terms of life skills. So obviously, number one would be the tool that you get. Uh, you get this tool bag from Liana. I think it's level 56. It is a quest line. And then you just talk to um, Liana. Or was it? Yeah, I think it's her right here. And then she answers or she gives you a bunch of questions. It's like multiple choice. Just pick the one. That's right. Just find a guide. It's on Google with all the right answers. You can do that too. And then she gives you a bag. You basically put all your tools in here and then you could hot swap between different life skills very easily. So the number one thing you would do is probably get the tool that you want followed by your like uh, main like life skill like armor piece, right? So we have to gather his clothes and then that. You probably have the Trent's tier if you are or if you've been playing seasons for a while and I honestly, I use this Trent's tier more than I use my cons heart. And as much as I do value mastery, I like the 30% XP because when you level up, it gives you permanent mastery. So I think I value the higher levels more. Um, so for example, if you're in your like guru 40s and 50s, you probably want to push that permanent mastery up and then People who are full Guru 50, which is very few actually, then that is when uh, the cons heart is more profitable. But overall, it, it's really just per personal preferences and use the one that you actually have. So let me go over something real quick. For all of you beginners out there, use a Spirit Stone. It's not bad. I would actually use this because it's like a one-time use and disposable. Once you run out, just uh, grind it up for those mis mythical powders or whatever to repair your main stone and then when we go into life stones here's how i would go about doing it i know there's basically zero on the market and it's not as easy to get one as i'm gonna talk about it but if you can get one i personally started off um well after going from spirit stone i went to sharp and then i went to con's heart uh to be honest i actually saved up enough coins from bartering like those crow coin thingies and then straight up bought the thing and made it myself so yeah i know this is very expensive it's like nine and a half billion silver and you're just like hmm, will i ever make that money back like nine and a half billion for gathering uh yeah i've made that money back super easily it's but it takes a little bit of time but it's like it's not that bad and um maybe like this will pay itself off in about Maybe between 30 to 50 hours, depending on your level of gathering and mastery. But ultimately, this Trent's tier thing was free if you played Seasons a while ago. I don't know if it's, it'll come back, but if you have it, it's really good. So after that, it really just comes down to accessories. And um, the easiest one and the cheapest that gives you the most thing is probably the Lightstones and... Uh, artifact combo so for example what i have is you see all these different life xps and then um various different like whatever your life skill you're doing get the one you enjoy doing and then add as a cheap alternative option um let me look at light stones so just get the one you enjoy doing because they give you like three percent xp and then just pick the ones you enjoy doing put like four of them in your and it's just easier xp so entry level, get your artifact, get your light stones. That's very budget option. Then get, or well, obviously get the tool first and then the armor piece or the clothes followed by the rest of the accessories and everything else. But with that said, I hope you guys learned something. Um, life skilling, it's very easy. It's when people tell you, you have to make like 50 different things and then it's very, it could be as complicated or as easy as you make it to be, because if you're trying to make the end game like 1% and you're max, min-maxing all the materials and you have to do something different every day, 
that is where all the profit comes in but it also takes a lot of time if you're just trying to make that easy like 1 billion 2 billion silver a day just by life skilling um the real answer would probably be like butchering and fluid collecting and then turn those things up into something that you think is wanted on the market and then yeah just sell it <laughs> but yeah overall if you have any questions about this i have a video on where i have gathered before like what are my favorite spots and you guys can check that out so yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed it thanks so much for watching if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button i would love to see you guys come back and we have some more cool stuff coming up in the near future peace